The following program is made possible by generous gifts from partners of Benny Hinn Ministries and viewers like you in this area. Pastor Benny Hinn is urgently preaching the gospel to the lost because the world's only hope is salvation through God's only Son, Jesus Christ. The gift of God is life eternal. This is your day to join Benny Hinn in proclaiming Jesus as Savior and Healer. Marilyn Hickey is with me today. We are going to have an awesome week. I'm telling you, awesome week because I love this lady with all my heart, and that's a fact. We've been friends for like ever, you know. We are going to show you Jesus in the Old and New Testament. You know, it's time we see Jesus in Genesis and Exodus and throughout the Word of God because once you find the Lord, it will enrich your life. I mean, think about this. You know, and I was just telling my sweet friend Marilyn, I did an experiment one day for myself. I thought, what if I lived 2,000 years ago and did not have Matthew, Mark, Luke, John 3? How would I find Jesus in the old covenant, I found him. Changed my life really as a preacher I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And today, you're going to show us the, the master in every, well, throughout the whole Bible. Jesus is in every book of the Bible, 39 books. And often, Benny, people don't read the Old Testament. So they lose 39 anointings because there's an anointing of Jesus with each book. I loved what you said to me earlier that the New Testament really explains the old, basically. Right. I mean, if we did not know the old, how would we know about the Passover? Exactly. exactly. And so much more. Because uh, Paul refers to the ca uh, Passover, but if you hadn't read Exodus, how do you really understand what it is? And Jesus is full in the Old Testament. It's picture after picture after picture. I love it. Listen, we're going to do these programs. Don't miss one program this week. We're going to start today and finish Friday. And then we're going to let you... Well, well, we will tell you how you can get the whole thing in this Jesus encounter. Right. It's time for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And you look awesome, by the way. I well, mean, Melon Hickey looks incredible. You I don't want to tell them how old you are, but... You I, can tell them. I'm 81. <laughs> wouldn't you love to look this way when you're 81? If I could look half as good as you do now when I'm 81, I'd be really, really happy. All right, listen, let's start. Okay. What are we going to do today? How will we show the Master in Scripture today? All right. Now, we have 39 books in the Old Testament, so we're going to see how it divides into four segments. Okay. First, we have the Pentateuch. Then we have the history books. Then we have the poetry books, you know, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Song of Solomon, Ecclesiastes. Right. And then we have these wonderful prophets, and so many people don't read the prophets. You know what I love about you? You get me so excited. You are an amazing Bible teacher. Marilyn Hickey, you are an amazing Bible teacher. You've always been. She used to come to OCC and blow me away, and you're doing <laughs> it again, just as you well, begin now. It, the whole Bible is Jesus. Absolutely. I and love people that. don't read the prophets, and so they're prophetless. And Jesus How has true. shown. In the prophets as much as anything, and the New Testament is quoted from the Old. So I really believe as we go through these four segments of the Old, first of all, that it will not only be you seeing Jesus and reading the Bible and getting excited about seeing him in every book, but the Bible begins to read you. You know, without Jesus, the Old Covenant has no meaning. None. None. It's all about law and regulations and really bondage if you right, look at it right but when you see the lord in it it's life it's giving awesome. it's, it's awesome. awesome and that's what paul talked about in ephesians to the church in ephesus and to the galatians and and and, and even the church in rome when you when you Re see what he Romans, said to them yeah it's awesome really okay let's begin i'm ready all Come right on. let's go to, let's just go through the pentateuch for okay a i love that so Genesis, who is Jesus in Genesis? Because it has these wonderful stories of people like Abraham, Isaac, right. Jacob, Joseph. But Jesus in Genesis is the seed of the woman. That's, Women don't carry it. the seed. Right. And later we're going to see he's virgin born in Isaiah. And of course, in the New Testament, he's virgin born. So he's the seed of the woman right away. Genesis 3.15. Then when we hit Exodus, wow. We have the Passover lamb, 
the night of the Passover, how they killed the lamb and applied the blood. And Paul says in Corinthians, he is our Passover. Well, how do you know what the Passover lamb is if you haven't read Exodus and really gotten excited about who Jesus is? You know, it's amazing. 32 prophecies in Exodus 12 fulfilled on the cross. Wow. It blew me away when I saw that. Wow. That's what I was just saying to you earlier when I did my own experiment. It's okay. Let's suppose I did not have Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans to read or any of the epistles. How would I find Jesus? You see Isaac carrying the wood. That's yes. Jesus scaring his exactly. cross. Exactly. You see Joseph, everything that happened to him was prophetic about yeah, the Lord. Exactly. Loved by his father, hated by his brethren, right. on and on. Exalted, taken out of the pit, that's the resurrection. The works, it's all there. It is. Now, Melon said something very powerful. He's the seed of the woman. Now, Melon, you know the Bible, of course, so well. If you, It even makes the genealogies exciting. Very. Because Matthew has the genealogy of Joseph. Right. And Luke has Mary's. Right. And when you say when you see Mary's, it comes from Nathan, while Solomon is the is the one that right. starts Joseph. And what blew me away is when I found in Jeremiah that God cursed the line of Solomon because of sin. Right. He, he said no king would sit on the throne. And he declared it by saying, Heaven, O heaven, earth, earth. I want you all to hear me, basically, that no king would sit on the throne through that line. So it goes back to he's the seed of the woman, not the man. Virgin born. Virgin born. But you wouldn't know that if you didn't go through the old. Of course not. And then you wouldn't know about this wonderful Passover lamb, the lamb of God that died for our sin, arose from the dead. You know, we wouldn't understand that. But then in Leviticus, he is our great high priest. Well, what is a high priest? We read about that in the New Testament. Well, what's a high priest? Well, when you read Leviticus, you see what a high priest really is. A high priest always made sacrifice, and a high priest always prayed. What did Jesus do as exactly. our great high priest? Yeah. He sacrificed himself. And what does he do now? He sits on the right hand of the Father, and he ever lives to make intercession. May I ask you a question that people ask me, but I want to hear your opinion. Why is Jesus still praying for us? I've been asked that question. Because he's our high priest. And the priest doesn't stop. This, the priest in the Old Testament had, didn't have an endless life. But our great high priest has, an, has eternal That really answers to the question of why would Jesus pray for us even eternally? Yes. Because he, he ever liveth. He ever lives to make intercession. That's his priesthood. That's and then, amazing, of course, he seats really. us with him, and we're called kings and priests. <laughs> I love it. But let's go to the next one. Let's. So let's look at numbers and how he took them through the wilderness. Oh, my goodness. He had the pillar of cloud by day, the pillar of fire by night. We see how he supplied every provision. You know, they never had a food bill. They never had a water bill. They never had an air conditioning bill. <laughs> they never had a heat bill. They right. had no clothing bill. They had no shoe bill. You know, they were protected so they didn't have to pay income tax for an army. Why? Because he was everything to them and he is everything to us. Now, let me also, uh, this is so rich. <laughs> the book of Leviticus was called Leviticus because it dealt with the Levites and their function. Numbers was called Numbers because that's when they numbered, numbered Israel. The people. Correct. Mm -hmm. I just want to give you some info just in case you want That's it. That's good. Exactly. And then Deuteronomy. Oh, why is Deuteronomy so powerful? Because Jesus quoted more from Deuteronomy and Isaiah and Psalms than any books of the Bible. And why would he focus on Deuteronomy, which, by the way, means second law, where the law was given to the second generation right. because the, their, the f first one died, if you remember, because of sin. But it's the word. Because Deuteronomy stresses the word, and basically, in, in sermons. In Deuteronomy, Moses basically rehearses what God yes. had given Israel and said and to Israel. And the power of the word. And Jesus is the living word. Now, I'd like to go over here oh, and I love that. draw some things out. Okay. Are you okay with I'm, that? I'm very okay. okay. In and fact, then I'm going to probably... talk to you back and forth, or do you want to come with I'm, me? I'm going to come with you. Okay, great. And, and that's a good thing. Okay, now, listen, dear yes. sweet melon. Yes. In Genesis, he's the seed of the woman. Right. In Exodus, he's the Passover lamb. Right. Okay. Then in Leviticus, he high is priest. our high priest. Yes, forever. In Numbers. He's the glory of God. 
because he takes us through our wilderness experience and supplies every need. And so we live in a fallen world, but we don't have a fallen God. And Deuteronomy? And Deuteronomy, he's the living word, the word of God. Made flesh. Awesome. <laughs> I can kiss you for all that. Let's go down. Love. Come on. Okay. okay. I'm going to yeah. be here standing watching you. And okay. I want to just show the tabernacle. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Now, what? how is the tabernacle placed? Because he told Moses exactly what to make, what was to be made, and how to place it in order. And what was the purpose of the tabernacle? It was communication of God with his people. That's it. And so they would bring a lamb as a sacrifice for the cleansing of sin. And then they could hear from him. So that tabernacle was very important. It's the place of communion. So God said, when you come into my presence, you have to have cleansing of sin because I am a holy God. So they would bring a lamb to the brazen altar, which is the biggest piece of furniture of all, right. they would sacrifice the lamb because you can't come in without the blood. You have to have the cleansing. So the priest would be there. You would put your hand on the head of the lamb and cut the lamb's throat. And then that lamb died in place of you for your sin. That's the brazen altar. But then the priest went to another place. Ah, here we go. I'm not the best artist in the world. And this is the brazen labor. Correct. And this was for the washing. And so he would wash his hands because he's going to go into the holy place. So we have the blood and we have the water for cleansing. Out of Jesus' side came blood and water. That's powerful. And so we have the beautiful washing of the water of the word. So you have the blood washing us and the, and word the water washing here. Us. Okay. Wow. Okay. Now we go into the. And whole it's lovely how you you explain how when the Lord died on the cross, blood and water. Blood and water came out, and see we begin to see all these. And things. we are washed by both. Absolutely, the washing of the water of the word. Okay. Now we go into the holy place. Yes, ma'am. And so we have the table of shoe bread here Correct. and they had 12 loaves on it and these represented each tribe and so they put those loaves on there reminding the priest that he was to uh, feed the people and that he always had them on his heart then they had a golden lampstand over here ah here we go so this lampstand gave the light to see the bread okay exactly. so because this is the covered place this is the holy place, okay? Now, also in this place, there is the altar of incense here. And this altar is where the priest would come. That's correct. And he would pray for the people. Okay, now, let's look at kind of how this goes together. It's the, the cross, Marilyn. Exactly. It's the cross. So we go into the holy of holies, and we have two pieces of furniture in one, really, we have the a box with the Ten Commandments yep. and so on. And then we have the mercy seat on top. Correct. And so we have two pieces. Now, let's look at these. That's in the shape of a cross. That's true. Because what's he pointing to? That Jesus is all these things. Jesus is our Lamb of God. He's our altar. He sacrificed his life for us. Amen. Jesus is the Word made flesh, the washing of the water of the Word. Amen. Jesus is the bread of life. Amen. Jesus is the light of the world. Amen. Jesus ever lives to make intercession for and us. That's the incense. Wow. Yes, and Jesus kept the covenant and sits on the mercy seat. Now, it's interesting you said something earlier that the lampstand shows the bread, but there is no lamp or light in the holy of holies because Therefore, god it, is the light yeah that's it he it's gives the, the light wow. <laughs> exactly you know i mean you you think about out here there's sunlight in in the holy place there's the lampstand but in the holy of holies is the glory of god right that's fun so natural light out here lampstand in here supernatural light the light of god in the holy of holies now benny this really gets good this it's is already so good. good, but I'm Woo! loving this. Wow. It's in numbers. Okay. And Go so ahead. in numbers, you know, uh, Balak uh, wanted to hire Balaam right. to curse the Israelites. Correct. But Balaam, I believe, had had an experience with God, but Balak tempted him with money and position. So finally, he presses beyond God's voice and goes to be with Balak. So he said, I want you to curse the Israelites. And so he said, well, I can only speak what God tells me to speak. So he takes him up on a mountain 
And he said, now curse them. But he builds an altar. He doesn't curse them. He blesses them. And Balak said, look, I'm paying you to curse them. He said, well, I can't, can't do it. So he said, take me on another mountain. So he takes him to four different places. And every time he blesses them. And Balak is so upset. He said, why don't you curse him? I'm trying to pay you to curse him. He said, I can't curse what God has blessed. Of course. Now let's look how the encampment was. So let's look and see how it looked from the four mountains. We have the tabernacle in the center. Okay. Yep. We have three tribes camped in the north. We have three tribes camped on the east. We have three tribes camped on the west. We have three tribes camped on the south. Now, so when he looked at them, what did he see? He saw the cross again. And you can't curse the cross because the cross took the curse and redeemed us and set us yeah, free. Awesome. Oh. Whoa! Oh, I love what God does. I'm loving it. And the oh. people are loving this. Oh, yeah. And how you could miss that if you don't read Old Testament. Well, exactly. And look for Jesus. Look for Jesus. Because he's so revealed in You want to come books. sit down? Yes, I'll let's go sit down. Okay. Let's do it. Now, okay, let's go back and talk about Jesus in Genesis now. Okay. For just a little bit. All right. The seed of the woman. I mean, you follow that seed throughout the scripture because in even people that God made, made a covenant with, only he made it with people that carried the seed. Right. You, you think about God made a covenant with Adam and with Noah and with Abraham, right. Isaac, Jacob. He didn't make one with Ishmael and Esau. Right. And he said to Abraham, in Isaac shall thy seed, meaning the Messiah, be mm -hmm. called. And the seed, the Bible says, in thy seed, he said to Abraham, in thy seed, all the nations of the earth will be blessed, meaning the Messiah. That's what Paul talks about That's in, true. in Galatians. Because it true. says he didn't say to seeds, but nope. to seed, seed, one seed. Now, when you follow that seed in the Old Covenant, I'm sure you have. I have. Talk to me. I want to I wanna hear more. Okay. Well, we, f we see how the seed fits in with the people, you know, with, like with Abraham. Because he said, in your seed, all the earth will be blessed. The seed of Abraham. So we follow Jesus. Right. Then we see Isaac. We see Jacob. But Joseph... Do you realize all the Jews could have died in starvation and famine if Joseph hadn't gone down to Egypt and become the prime minister of Egypt? Mm. And he had those dreams. Why? Because God wanted his seed saved. So they could have all died except Joseph was sent ahead. And if they had all died, there would be no Messiah. Mm. And that's always the devil's plan. No Messiah. You see, because... God has promised he will send the Jews a Messiah. So if the devil can kill all the Jews, then the Bible's wrong. I want to know just a little more about what you were talking about with the cross. I mean, we see the cross in the Old Covenant. Right. It's so powerful. Right. Just a little more on right. that. Right. Well, you see how it was uh, patterned in the tabernacle, in right. the encampment of the people, how these people are the seed that are to be blessed and not cursed. You can't curse what God has blessed because that's his chosen seed. But I want to talk about Ruth for a moment. Please. Because Ruth shows the kinsman redeemer. Now, Ruth was a Moabite Gentile, right? Mm -hmm. She's not of the seed. But she did something because we would have thought she probably would have done the expected. You know, her mother-in-law is there. Her father-in-law dies. Uh, the two sons die of Naomi and Elimelech. Mm. And so uh, when Naomi gets ready to leave, she's very depressed. And so she said, uh, you know, you probably girls should stay here because I can't have another son in time for you to marry. And plus the food is similar here. The gods are similar here. You've got relatives here. You have a better opportunity to marry. So we would expect they would stay there because Orpah said, well, I'll just stay here. She did the expected. But Ruth did the exceptional. She said, no, Naomi, I'm going to go with you. And so she trusted Naomi's God because she said, your God is my God. Watch it. Watch it. This is a Gentile jumping in on the promise. Okay, so whoa, they... Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> now I see why God chose her because uh, she chose him. That's right. 
And he had to wow. show Gentile and Jew coming together wow. in Jesus. Now, that is another powerful thing you just said. <laughs> it is. Say that again, please. Well, you see the Gentile and the Jew united in Jesus. Because we're going to see Ruth is going to be the carrier of the seed wow. that will produce the Messiah. So Ruth did the exceptional. That's a faith thing. When we make faith decisions, everybody who's born again has made a faith decision. You see what I'm saying? Then God does the extraordinary. You, make, you move in faith, watch God. So she goes in faith to Bethlehem. You know, she doesn't know the food. And she's taken Naomi's God. But then a man named Boaz, uh, who's a relative, begins to see her, is attracted Marlon, Marlon, to repeat, her. Repeat, but because this is so awesome. Really. Okay. I, you know, I, I don't want you rushing. Okay, Orpa did the acceptable. She did the expected. Expected. That's okay. what you would expect her and to do. And so people that do that don't don't get anything. They from never God. get the extraordinary. Okay. So then, but Ruth did did the, the exceptional. And when you do that, God will do the extraordinary. My God, that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, Benny, I love to teach with you. You're I so love it excited. because see, I'm trying to get that little pieces of meat off the bone. <laughs> <laughs> You're going so fast. Oh. Go down. So then, Boaz, who is a relative. He could marry the widow of uh, Naomi. Yeah. Okay. A, a widow but, but of Naomi's the, son. The, let's go back to the extraordinary. Okay. That God gets in there and says, exactly. because of this, I'm going to bring you into my covenant. You will carry the seed, my son. I mean, that to me blows me away. Extraordinary. So when she said, your God will be oh, my God, yes. God said... You're in, girl. That's right. I'm and gonna, that's I'm the same use with you. us, because Christ in us is the hope of glory. Wow. We got the seed inside. <laughs> okay, listen. We're going to continue tomorrow. Don't miss it. <laughs> I'm telling you, she is an awesome Bible teacher. You know, I know the Bible, and I love the Bible, and I teach the Bible. Word. When I get around Melon, it stirs me up. <laughs> it's like, you know, we sharpen each other. Do. I don't know. You okay, now listen. The whole Jesus encounter, you got to get it today. It's all in here. That's right. Every book. Do you realize that? You mean all the New Testament? Yeah, 66 books of seeing who Jesus is. Oh, dear God. Man. It Madeline, just comes really? on fire inside of you. Behold Jesus in every book of the Bible. That's the one thing I get asked all the time. Show me Jesus in the Old Testament. Oh. Think, think. If you lived 2,000 years ago, how would you find the Lord? You have to find him in Genesis and Exodus. I mean, you cannot find. True. There, there would be no Matthew, Mark, Luke, John to read for you, you know. And think that those saints were so powerful that they died for him. Exactly. I mean, where would where would some Christians be today? Right. If there was no Matthew, Mark, Luke, John to read. True. They'd be in trouble. True. Some some of them. A lot of trouble. Yeah. So you need this. All right. Jesus in every book of the Bible. Get it, please, today. Now, you've got how many pages in this thing? Goodness. I don't know how uh, many There's pages 400, are. oh, goodness, 500 and something pages, over 500 pages of material, and plus maps in the back. Wow, right. I didn't know you had maps back there. See, this is a resource. I mean, you don't read through this like you're reading a book. No, of course not. But this is a resource with your Bible. So you say, oh, you know, I'm in Malachi. Who's Jesus in Malachi? And you turn in here. And this That's tells awesome. you and tells you how all of these Old Testament books are mentioned in the New Testament. So you see the quotes, new and old, and how they flow together, Ben. They, well, right here, for example, if you give me a little close shot there, guys, you will see old, new, old, new. So you've got what the Old Covenant says about right. it and how it was fulfilled in the New Testament. And it's quoted, how it's quoted in the New Testament. That's awesome. Yeah, every book of the New Testament quotes from old. Think how, what, what, how God can enrich your Christian life oh my. with this. For the gift of $50, you can get this amazing Jesus Encounter study guide today. You know, $50 is really not a whole lot of money for this. If you should buy books on this, oh, you'd pay over a thousand dollars easily. Probably, if you did study books on all of, of course, this. I mean, plus the DVD every day helps you to see it and also to share it with what we're doing well, with we'll, other people. We'll send the DVD free to you when you call of these programs we're doing together. So all five programs coming to you free, 
So call the number on the screen today and get this amazing Jesus encounter and how we need today to present the Lord in all right. his fullness to his people. And this is the thing, you know, that's happening out there. I mean, here you have, you know, in Times Square, this picture of the Lord insulting him this last right, Christmas. Right. You know, people, uh, you know, it's, it's shocking to see how the world views him. And even in the church, uh, that there are some forces I know. that want to remove his word from even people's hearts. I know. We are not going to allow that. Nope. We are sold on Jesus. We love him, loyal to him, committed for forever. Right. I've said to the Lord, I said, unto death, Lord, unto death. Absolutely. I would gladly die for him. Absolutely. And I know you, you would too. And I know yeah. you would too, precious saints. Who, who else do we have in this world but him? And we have none but the Lord. Exactly. And if you don't read the Old Testament, you lose 39 revelations of Jesus. Can you imagine? How we said, well, I just read really. the New. Well, that's 27, but there are 66 revelations. But, and the reason people don't read the Old Testament in some cases, it's because they're not looking for the Lord. No, they're not. In the Old Covenant. They're, they're looking not. for history, poetry, prophecy. Well, it, after a while, it's going to get quite boring. Right. But if you see Jesus, oh. when, when I read Genesis and reread and reread and reread the Bible, what, what am I looking for? I'm looking for more of the Lord in it. I, I want to see Jesus clearer. And God reveals His Son through His Word. It's incredible. And That's some what things you'll never get unless you read Old Testament. Over and over. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Okay. And this is free right here. This is a portrait Good. of the Lord praying for us. You know, yeah. Suzanne got me that a few years ago. I love uh, it. Yeah, and, you know, every so often, you know, in, in your moments when you need to be reminded right. that Jesus is praying for you. And so this is a similar one that we have for you, precious partners, and it's free. All you have to do is call today. And I wrote a prayer for the people on the bottom. Good. And it gives the scripture from Hebrews 7.25 that he ever lives to make intercession. And that's free. Love you. Thanks for being my friend and partner. And tune in tomorrow for more Jesus encounters. Love, Melanie, and love you too. Bye-bye. This week, Pastor Benny Hinn continues his extended visit to the nation of South Africa. And soon on This Is Your Day, you'll see the exciting events which are taking place as souls are being saved, bodies healed, and lives changed through the power of Jesus. And in just a few days on Thursday, March 28th, Pastor Benny will be in Pensacola, Florida for one great miracle service at Brownsville Assembly of God. Then he'll hold his much-anticipated Good Friday Communion Miracle Service in Orlando at the Holy Land Experience on March 29th at 7 p.m. And the next day, Saturday, March 30th, he will be at Faith World in Orlando for a miracle service at 4 p.m. And in April, Pastor Benny will conduct miracle healing services at the National Stadium in Port of Spain, Trinidad on the 13th and 14th. Then he travels to Louisville, Kentucky for two great services at Evangel World Prayer Center on the 17th and 18th, followed by services in Washington, D.C. at the National Church of God on April 19th and 20th. For more information on these and other events, please visit the ministry website at www.bennyhen.org. 